Hi, back again. Classic Mad Dogs TV classic review of Sadly Enough, Boo Hoo Hoo, The Tears Are But Falling. Like Niagara has its forever ending fall and some of the new places over in Battersea. Ooh, shouldn't say that, but there you go. Gives you a clue. Yep. STD. As its counterpart has reached its final episode. And was it a very good episode? Well, I'll explain as much as I can, as capably as I can, in the Mad Dog way, on how and where and what we're going to be dealing with in the future. So... Now, most of what's going to be taking place now is all purely speculation. Speculation on how I would see, bearing in mind, working on the focus of Star Trek Voyager. And I must have to, when, I first, when it opened, when this series, when this episode, the finale, season one episode, materialised, if I didn't know this universe as much as I do uh, as well as I do I would say in all shades of grey that bit of a pun there all shades of grey that I was watching the Star Wars episode but then I also would reflect again still touching not so much Battlestar Galactica this time I've got to say it weren't touching so much as that it was indeed touching surprising enough, and surprised the bejesus out of me, Star Wars. I thought, how did that fit in? How on earth can a Star Wars type presentation appear in the Star Trek, Star Trek universe? Well, it sure enough did. And it was still entertaining, just as well as any other show within the Star Trek universe. But, sad enough, still... As I have to say, even to the very end, but I'm not knocking it now because I said I've got to say it's definitely the show that I didn't expect it to be. It's turned around so remarkably. I really do hope that this season weren't the series finale. One questions that. I can't see it, but it was very corny. I'll give you that spoiler later if you haven't seen the show already. But the score is, quite surprisingly enough, you know, with the uh, going by again, we're now we've got a base on the basis of the Star Trek Voyager universe. And you can also use, uh, I'm trying to think of one of the other episodes where the most compactant enemy seem to keep applying. Um... Voyager was obviously weren't so much the ball, but it did near the end. That was the enemy in that show. When you look at Deep Space Asta, one Deep Space Nine. Go back to one of the seasons, Circle Part One, Part Two, and the following episodes that followed that particular series leading up to the Dominion War. Now you're getting a gist of the idea of where I'm following and which way I am moving and motioning toward my opinion of today's, my review of today's show. I mean, it was brilliant. I won't say it was crap. I would not say, sorry, I shouldn't say that word. Forgive me for that. I would not say it was rubbish. I would say it was quite interesting, quite twisting and quite entertaining. Battle scenes... Well, kifty fuss, um, women fights, if you're into that, it was about the only major excitement in that show and a bit of suspense. But I, you have to watch it if you haven't seen it, would watch it. It was good. I liked the way it was played out and I liked the way it was written and directed as well, accordingly. My reaching out arms are wide to say, yeah, well done. Excellent, keep that up. Please hurry up with season two. But anyway, let's get to the nitty gritty. Now, 
the basis of this termination of this show, of this season finale, I must give the spoiler to a small degree. It's to do with the Klingon homeworld, Kronos, which we are very familiar with now in all these universes and all of these transitions of the Star Trek universe. For those who follow Star Trek, you know where I'm coming. And, well, all I can say is, I like the way they did it, especially with the captains. Like they said to captains, they weren't saying specifically how they were doing his captains, but they done enough with these captains, which made it very interesting. And now we go to the question mark of the uh, speculation. Now, remember in episode 14 and 13, the original captain from unknown then until the, the last episode from the alternate universe, he got killed. Right. His well-being, he got the uh, discovery way back to his universe. Now, the actor, with respect, and I do like the actor, he's very good, he's a very strong character, so is Tilly now, I might say, Tilly. I mean, they've already spaced out the cat, uh, the characters, you got S uh, Sula, or whatever his name is, uh, Su uh, Subo, or whatever his name is, I can't think of his name, I only just watched the show just now. He's a good captain, he's a very un- Interesting captain. He's not an un. He's not a boring captain. He's a very interesting captain. You've got the young Sarek Spock's dad in it as well. You've got now Burnham, like in surprise, surprise, the Voyager system and the world. The escapee, the uh, convicted criminal, has now been reinstated to the Federation, like. The other character in Voyager, we know who well that was. Mr. Paris. Yes, became back in the Federation. So there you go. They followed that to the latter. In 100%. And she was doing a role of a number one. So, you know, there's speculation there. Could she be the next number one? And Saruk being still the captain. Well, he's the acting captain. But I reckon keep him as the captain. Because that does the job well. He's doing the well. His character is a strong character. Tilly, surprising enough, has turned out to be extremely strong. Bit clumsy, but still very, very strong. And of course we know, obviously, the guy who allows him to launch through various dimensions which he's not allowed to use his powers at this moment in time we will see that will change no doubt often does in the universe of the star treks so we're looking now now let's talk about that captain that captain who got killed well the alternate one let's face it he wants to come back the actor who played that role wants to come back well yeah that's easy to be done we know in the universe, if you use the stigma of, yes, carry on with the Voyager stigma, but you can also use, now, I have to say this, you can actually use a stigma of one of the other Star Trek shows. Touched it slightly. But you also are touching another show, totally unrelated to the Star Trek universe. I mean, you got Star Trek Continues. I think they may have used something similar to this particular role where he can come back. But what does work, and I know for a fact we're all going to say, go on, lay it on us, Mr. Dog. Well, I'm going to lay it on you. The way I can see it, now correct me if I'm wrong, remember old Scotty. Oh, yes, good old Scotty. He was stuck in a... in the thing that allows them to go to another planet quite easily. Transporter. I know I'll get it right soon. See, I'm getting old now. I'm tired. Very, very tired. But anyway, 
He was stuck in a transporter. Now for 70 years, they said. Oh, that's a long time. Oh, God, the guy was still alive in a transporter. So, he materialised. They did the same with Riker. The alternate Riker. So, gives you a clue how you can actually incorporate if there is a season two, which I really do hope there is for everybody, because it was a good show. It was surprisingly, in the end, following the stigma 15 episodes is exactly what Voyager did, was 15 episodes of season one, and then come season two, 22 episodes. There you go. It was done. It was able, anchored. I would say pretty much those who are following the show, this is anchored. Now, I would love more than anything to be able to have a better studio, a better arrangement. And I would love all of the uh, actors that are in this show. I'd love to meet them and talk to them personally. I mean, that's every fan base's ambition. But I think we'd have a good insight and it'd be a damn good conversation because each one of those actors are very good characters with the roles that they are playing within that show. And I would love to meet those personally and have a chat for everyone so we all could get an insight on their take on how they felt their role and how they believed their role to be. I mean, it's an acting role. It's a role that everyone likes to do. You know, I act to a degree on all my other out, my other projects. I don't, that's not who I am, but it's pretty much the sum of the type of character I am. You know, I'm a straight lace like anybody else. I'm an old git, my God, where's my Zimmer frame? But that's me. Yeah, I still have a twist of humour and obviously insanity, but that's me. That's my own opinion. But I'd love to meet these uh, actors and actresses that are in these roles of this new transition of the Star Trek universe. I think they'd be an interesting conversation. I'd love them to email me and arrange somehow, or we could arrange somehow a good meeting somewhere in a nice area that allows me to film, and we could have this general meeting and chat. And so we're all at home and comfortable and talking how we are feeling in the roles that they are playing and that they are maybe playing, hopefully, if there's a season two, which I really do hope there is. I've got to say that now. Even if it only makes like the same as The Enterprise, four episodes, or the same as the original series, The Corny Side, which will be explained short, explained a little way later. You know, so you got all that all developing in within the show. And I said... Keep the good work up. I'm thinking it's fabulous. You've done well. I mean, it's a bit upsetting to see it end in the way it has. I was expecting it to be a suspense, the ending a suspense. Many of these shows end a season in a suspense. But no, it didn't. But it did end. And I have to say this, it actually ended in my memory recollection. Now, we all know how... I've got to say this, the Enterprise is how that ended in season one. He was trapped elsewhere. But then when it came on, which they could have ended like they have done now with this show, he's back at the Federation home world, he's back at Earth, in the Federation's head office, or whatever you want to call them. Hey, I'm not going to talk the uh, jargon about that because it gets boring after a while. Even though I'm a great fan and I enjoy that show myself. But anyways, I come straight out with it how it is and the way I think it should be. So you've got Burnham now who's been reinstated back completely as a, a Federation staff member. Uh, and then yeah, you reflect back on a number of the episodes of Enterprise where the captain ended up back at the home world with a big meeting and unfortunately the season the series ended with him saying how we need to go far and beyond well they'd use that corny sort of approach with the end of season one but that weren't the end of season one 
the very end is the coolest part and I'm coming to that shortly but anyway where were we we were still talking I keep swapping around between words I mean I've given you a clue how we could reintroduce the original captain of the discovery the original captain not the alternate because he's dead but the original captain might be able to be revived in that and he will be able to make a recome and you could you know here's an example now if you trace the history of where you've had uh, Captain Picard from the original Next Generation he was taken over by the Borg he was compromised by the Borg which affected him now using that in line you could use that with the new captain with the original captain he can return in that aspect he will be traumatized he will be damaged and it's him rediscovering himself there's a good storyline which i think i'm sure you could use and co-writers and producers if you ain't already thought of that already it's an angle to actually bring him back in and he was a good character he was a strong character or he was a nasty character well that version of him but the original, as a sum of the man, the sum of the role that was played, it would be an interesting character to rematerialize. Now, we come to the corny part. You've got the discovery out there on a call. And surprise, surprise, we finally hear that of the Enterprise. Uh, shock, horror, surprise, the Enterprise? From the discovery to the Enterprise, the tie-in has finally merged with Captain Pike. Wow, that's a spoiler you didn't expect, neither did I. I was shocked myself, but if they played it right, that's how they could reintroduce the original Captain. Through a strange fluky mission, he was, his was discovered, bang. Who knows? Or is this going to be where they carried on with the two captains? And we know who the bad enemy is going to be on this one. You know, like, every story has its nemesis. Like, you go through the original series, the original series has always been Klingons, major nemesis. Then you go through the next generation, two nemesis were involved there. Originally it was... The Q continuum. He kept on appearing and putting them in uh, bad situations. And then came the Borg. The Borg were the worst. And then you go to Deep Space Nine. Who was their nemesis for the last few seasons? The Dominion. The Dominion and the Shapeshifters. So, following in that same path, we've got from the original chronography you've got Klingons surprise surprise from the original season to the new series so it's full circle so Klingons there, Klingons there Klingons from the beginning, Klingons to the end and then comes the ones in between as I said, next generation was the Q, then the Borg then came Deep Space Nine it was the Dominion and the Cardassians with the occasional, uh, oh God, what's those other ones called? I can't think of them offhand, but I think you get the gist. The uh, counterparts to the uh, Vulcans, uh, for the life of me, I, can't, I, I feel dumb not being able to mention what they are. I can't think of them off the top of my head. But anyway, now we leave that side. We now go to, in, uh, where was we? The Voyager. Voyager series. The main problem they had was the caretaker at first and then it became the other uh, sects of, the, uh, of that universe, of the universe they were in. I don't want to say too much because A, I may get them wrong. The Kazon, that was it. Sorry. I had to slip them in. The Kazon was one of their, uh, there was one of their nemesis throughout the whole of that show with the exception of one or two little sideline stories 
to do with Kess, to do with the, um, again, the caretaker, and to do with um, Kess's people. They were small pointers of that nemesis of the show, but the main menace, as we know, was, again, the Kazon, and then became the Kazon and the Borg. Yeah, no figure, but that's the way it went. And then comes the Enterprise, the other transition, who was the enemies in that? Again, it was the uh, Klingons. Uh, they were the main nemesis. Quite a lot. And then you had a couple of uh, sideline captains, which were rogue. You had a couple of those appeared within the show. Then you had the Suliban. The Suliban was with the worst shape-shifting, time-travelling. Hey, there's a Zulaban there. Where? Oh, there. Oh, it's too late. It's just killed me. Yeah. No, oh, it's just taken over my body. Hey, man, I'm a Zulaban. You know, yeah, that was their main, main, main nemesis. Obviously, in the guy from Earth who was making sure they were involved with the alternate federation, the uh, future federation from the future which we touched, which we know touched twice in the Voyager show. Now, one says, bearing all those nemesis, now, let's build up, again, literally speculation. Season two begins. You've got the Enterprise Pike leading that flagship still. And you still got the Terran captain lookalike from the captain that got killed from Burnham's assault on the Klingon homeworld originally. Or the well, homeworld, it was their um, worship ship, which was a big, big warship. I wouldn't like to see that. But through that situation, you know, they goes to the alternate universe and now the alternate universe introduced the lookalike captain which got killed which that's the end of that story as well as the alternate guy who's able to travel using spores another twist in the story now he's not allowed to use them at the moment but we know he will if they do more seasons and then you go to the, uh, now, when Burnham left the alternate universe, when they were able to leap back to their universe, Burnham, in her own good nature, rescues her captain. She didn't want to see this simulation of her captain die. So she brought her into this world. So, speculation states... It's going to be devoted on A, still the Klingon battles. I reckon that's still. Then you're going to have that other, like Vulcan. I'm not going to say who they are because we know who we're talking about. Those who follow the Star Trek universe. It will come to me, I'm sure, but not into this review, I'm afraid. So I feel I said a bit dim on that one. <laughs> other than that, God, I am dim. Mind you, it's quite early in the hours of the morning. Uh, very early. Is it morning still? Or is it daytime? No, it's still morning, definitely. But anyways, enough of that. We uh, then get back to track and... Well, she's going to get away. Burnham's going to be tracing that. So is the... Uh, will we see more influence of the... Enterprise with Pike. I don't know. Still with the uh, ones hanging on there. But we're wondering is this going to lead us to the thingy accord? I can't remember. I always have a problem with that. It was something called the accord. It was before the Star Trek universe, before the original series. It was consisting of the Vulcans, who were their allies. Of course, yeah, we know 
still with the Klingons, it was still with the, um, oh God, if I can remember those bloody characters. They'll come to me, but I said, unfortunately not for this review. But I reckon we'll see Romulans. That's it, I knew I would get it eventually, those bloody Romulans. That's who we're going to see if they do a season two, which I do hope they do. I think it's going to be leading up to the Romulan Accord, where there's a unification starting with the Klingons. So, you know, we still know they still keep being a nuisance to the Federation right up till, oh, well, up till the next generation kicked in so they were an annoyance through the original series we know that so bearing that storyline you also had the Romulans who were very scarce who were very hard to be uh, traced no one knew a great deal about them so my gesture of speculation would be I'd say if there's a season two it's going to be a storyline which is a to do with the alternate Captain, the Empire, the Empress of the alternate universe, the return of the original Captain on methods similar or so from what I did with Scotty. And then we'll still have the Klingons doing the odd attack, and then I reckon we'll start seeing the Romulans. Because that's the only thing that's missing. There's no battle between uh, the original series and the Romulan Empire. Now, the Romulan Empire only was so speculative throughout all of the whole entire series. You'd have them in the original series once or twice. Then you'd move to the Enterprise. I think they may have appeared. They appeared maybe once in that. So did the Borg. Then you go to, in not chronology, this is in timelines as such. Enterprise was first, so I apologise. And then you go to the next generation. The most prompt was the Romulans. Again, from the alternate universe. So, all these mythologies are unwinding. And, you know, we can see in speculation, yeah, they can use this. And maybe they will. I don't know, they might, and it'd be a damn good story, because it's still leading up to the thingy accord. I never remember the full name of that accord, but it was to do with the Romulans. So then we go into where we hit the, uh, oh God, what was that? Oh, Deep Space Nine, Deep Space Nine, Romulans joined forces with the Cardassians, who joined forces with Dominion. And then finally they splintered and then it became the Romulans finally helped the Federation. But that's a timeline way after, way long time after, where they've cited STD. So there you go. There's your window. STD could be the thing to do with the thingy accord to do with the Romulans. And that would be an interesting story because then you could, you can see how many series that can make. And you still got, what's his name floating around as well? We know that very well. Mud. Yes, mud is still floating around. And so is the imitation. Klingon still floating around. So it all pans out. It's following the line of the original series but still touching Voyager. And unfortunately, as I said, it did touch Star Wars. And I still would say, if we get to the battles, which I want us to see more of those, makes it more mm, meaty, because it worked well with Voyager. So, if they're following the patterns of Voyager, then there's going to be a lot more battles involved. Goody, 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 yummy, yummy, yummy. Keep the good work up, and let's see more of this excitement. And suspense. And maybe maybe a few more arcs, which would which are useful for such a franchise and well we'll see on speculation of how it's going to develop and I do hope it ain't going to be too long before we have to wait if there is a season two because it would be nice especially how the show has developed you know it's like a baby just growing I mean this has matured it's matured a lot quicker than um, Star Trek 
Voyager, which is a surprise. And, well, Klingons aren't speaking like Jerbohemians, which is upsetting, because it gave me something to take a mickey out of, or dog it. But now they are speaking more threatening, and now they're trying to piece up the pieces for now before they rematerialize which i think you'll find if they do another season or more it'll be around the time of the romulan accord and that will be something i'm sure out there to tying those pieces that are missing throughout all of the various shows that were taking part in this particular franchise bearing all that in mind well you know, Romulans, it'd be interesting to see how they changed them. Well, they had the big heels, like the Vulcans. So, did they have the same colour skin? Or were they slightly tinted a little bit? Like, you know, zombies, but with makeup. Could be, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how they're going to, if Romulans will star in, hopefully, another season of, or two or the discovery well i really hope they do because it would be nice to see more of this show I've, it's got so much more potential now it, the co-writers that are working with it as well uh, you know I, I i give great admiration to them i would love them to help me direct some of my shows you know like my show that i'd love to be releasing but i can't lack of backing lack of money which is the um which touched a lot of sci-fi, it touched a lot of busy, it touched a lot of horror and suspense. You know, another limit. There's four seasons of that. The whole show's been written, but unfortunately, without the backing, and I could do with the co-writers and directors helping me with it, it would make it a very good, interesting show. But we're not talking about my show. That's irrelevant to this. I mean, this is an STD review. A wind-up. Oh, a sad one. Oh, I hope, there's gonna, I hope I'm going to be able to do this again soon for season two. Because it will be good. I mean, it's going to be interesting. Because when season two starts, if season two starts, speculation, hopefully it does. I don't know what I'd be doing the same way as I've done these reviews every fortnight. Well, with the exception of now it ended at 15, which is following the original series, as I said previously. And, well, I don't know. If it works okay, then great. If they carry on with the path they're following, then even better. I'm not going to complain. I'm sure all the fan base out there will enjoy it. Meantime, what we've got to follow now is... Uh, reruns of the old series and obviously I'll always recommend it Star Trek Continues Star Trek Continues is a good show I hope they use some of those characters if there's a season 2 they could do with using some of those characters in the new show it would be interesting it would be bloody interesting in fact to combine what the fan base with an original template that they've used other sci-fi attributes in i mean but i said i was shocked to see how well it was done and how well it did and the fact that if i didn't know star trek as i did i'd be looking at it and thinking am i watching a star wars episode or something or some other sci-fi limitation like that because it was good without a doubt i could not fault it there was no fault i could find in that show at all it's 100 percent recommended 100% recommended to watch. And I would say, this is the one to watch. This is the one to see how it develops. This is the pinnacle for the show's development. You could use this and the base of the last seven episodes. Seven episodes onwards. That is where you change the show. You change the show into a way that has got everybody, probably newbies out there, into this whole concept. And I tell you what, it's worked. Hopefully you've had enough views for all the other outlets that have been releasing this show for it to merit 
that season too. And more, preferably. You know, you've done well. I can't fault any other way around it apart from your storylines are strong. The show was strong. It was surprisingly interesting. And I would love to show more clips. Well, if there's a season two with what I've got planned, if I am allowed to do that, with respect, and I hope CBS ain't going to sue my butt for it, if I can use sketches or photographs of if there's another season for those who do not watch the show, I'm going to try and give you an insight on that. But, again, my hands are tied because copyright protection. I mean, copyright protection is a right pain in the butt. I mean, I've got copyright protection on another limit. But, again, it's copyright limits and rules that have stopped me releasing all of those shows. I haven't said I'm not going to, but I will do. It's just time, money and placent. There's a lot involved in that. Lighting and scenery and permission to use where I'm filming in areas where I will be filming if I do get to film another limit. Which is promising to be quite good. But again, I keep slipping into that show that I have written but I can't let anybody see because uh, there's too many copyright issues and not enough backing to produce such a, a show or shows. But back to the serious matter of hand and winding this up, classic TV review of STD. And that is, you know, the speculation is you've got so much potential now left in this show. I hope you don't miss the opportunity as producers. And I hope that, with great respect, CBS will allow me to maybe show the odd small clip it. I'm not saying the video clip it, because no, that wouldn't be something I could do, I don't think. But I'm talking photographs. You, know, you saw it in some of the other, comp other people that do this type of thing. They've done it for various other sci-fi shows. I'm not a sci-fi buff. Well, I am a sci-fi buff, obviously. But I'm strictly a classic TV. There's no limitation of where I would go. But I'm hoping to give you more to work on rather than my ugly mug, which can get rather boring. I think, oh, God, it's that damn dog again. Oh, no. Take him off the screen. Cover the face. No, I hope I don't affect people that way. That'd be awfully upsetting if I did. But all I can say is, you know, I hope that if there is a season two of STD, I can present it even better than this experience. I mean, it's been an experience for me and I hope it's been entertaining an experience for you guys out there who are following my reviews. I mean, I do all reviews, obviously. I do reviews on everything and anything. My goddamn light has gone down to sleep. Oh my God. That is not good. Oh, dear him right in the face. Oh, that'll have to do. Oh, my God, that is blinding. Yeah, but anyway, all I can say is I'm running out of time now because uh, I try not to make them too long. This has been exceptionally long special because it's the end of season one of STD. So I hope everyone who's out there who's enjoyed and watched and viewed all my reviews with reference to this show and I hope you've enjoyed them and I hope to see you again soon and discuss more of the things. I might tickle a, a few reviews of the older shows and see how we can compare them. I may compare them with this show but uh, we'll see. It's only speculation for myself on that one. Mad Dog's ta uh, classic TV reviews. So, until then, or not, hopefully, look forward to season two. Hopefully, there will be a season two. Hopefully, I'll have a lot more to show you and hopefully give you a lot more entertainment with the Mad Dog's review of STD. And this has been Said Review. 
hope you've all enjoyed and I hope I've entertained you enough throughout these long periods. Till next time, if not, be safe, take care of yourself, be lucky and as I do, I have to do it. Live long and prosper, uh, live long and prosper is the saying they say. I can't do it with the other hand, unfortunately. It's a bit awkward with that one, as it sometimes could be missing. Okay, now you know the secret of the dog. Till then or next, or not. Just take care of yourselves, be lucky, be safe and enjoy and be happy. And be safe. Most of all, it's been my pleasure. Bye now.